Okay. I'll swing back around with the remote people. I'd love to see that people are already banging some stuff out. So um, we can also take another block out. So I chose the right 90 because I'm right-handed and I tend to think go right. And if I click that block, the turtle turns 90 degrees. Now, it's not like driving a car where in order to turn right, I have to also be going forward a bit and drawing, kind of making an arc as I go. This one moves, it turns on a dime. So if I go forward 150 and turn right 90, I'm immediately facing right in that case. And then if I snap those two blocks together, you'll see it does both of those actions. Now, part of using a computer is being lazy. And while I can sit here and click that enough times to make a square, I could also be crafty and look over here under the, the orange tab, which is the flow blocks, and you'll see a repeat. Anything you want to have repeated, it goes under this bracket here. And then anything you want to have happen after it's done the, with the repeat, it goes under the block. And there's a little spacer you can use so your blocks don't overlap. So if I do that, the turtle's going to draw a square for me. Everyone get that far? Cool. Now, you'll notice that I called this figure, as it were, this design, a square. And under this yellow block, uh, tab rather, there's this hat block. That's what Brian and Paula call it, a hat block. And if I put that on top of my repeat four, and click on it to select that block. I can name it whatever I want to name it. I could name it Josh if I want to, okay? But it's helpful if somebody else is gonna use my code and we're gonna all share code as the week goes on. It might be helpful for me to name it something a little more descriptive. So maybe box would be a good name. Or if, if I decide, eh, how about square? since we're talking geometry. I can click back on it and, and retype the name. And you'll notice that it creates a block here underneath the store and box blocks. It's a block that, that's named what I named it. And if I click on that block, it does that. I gotta keep the, this stack around because these are the moves that it takes to make this block happen. I can tuck it down here so it's out of my way. But now that I have this block, I can use it in different ways. So maybe what I want the turtle to do is draw a square. And when you're done drawing a square, let's go right a little bit. Let's say, let's go right 20 degrees. Now. I'm 48 years old and, and I, I can do the math in my head, but again, using a computer is about being lazy. So if you wanna be lazy because we're on summer break, we could do something like this. How many degrees do I go if I go all the way around in a circle? Does anyone know how many degrees that is? Yeah, 360, thank you. So I could say repeat 360 divided by, all the numbers are under this pink tab, 360 divided by how far I'm turning. So in this case, 20. Okay. Now, I'm gonna add this clean on top here. And if I click on the top block, it'll give me this design. So instantly we've gotten much more complex with just starting with 
that simple square that we all programmed and got this block. And then maybe I can play around with this a bit and I can say, maybe go right and go forward a little bit. And what does that do to the design? Well, that's interesting. I'm getting even more secondary shapes from the overlap. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to save our work. And we're gonna to wanna to save this because disk space is cheap and we have lots of free disk space here. And we're gonna to wanna to build, start building a collection of designs that we can exchange with one another uh, through Google Drive um, and play with. So over here on the left side of my window at the very bottom is this download button. And if I click it, it asks me to name it. Something better than un untitled would be good, so I'm gonna name this one Westport One, in my case. And then I'll click OK. And what it downloads is, is a, the, the file in a PNG format. And you've gotta be a little careful with this, because on a Mac, if I click it, and similarly on a PC, if you click it, it's gonna open up in just the image viewer. And if I mess with it, I'm gonna break the magic in it. Because what Brian and Paula did is inside that image file, so I just reloaded the web page and erased everything, like all my blocks are gone. But fortunately, I saved my work. And this image file, I can just drop back into a fresh copy of Turtle Art running in my browser, and all the code comes back with the image. So the, the code is saved inside the image file. So don't make a copy of the image file if you're gonna take it into Photoshop or Illustrator or something like that. So let me just switch back over here real quick and make sure I hit all my talking points, and then we'll talk about where to go next. Ah, yeah, missed the talking point. So if you're anything like me, you like the color red, but you know there's more crayons in the box, right? But like everything in this program, it's telling me I need to set the color using a number. Well. I'll, I'll tell you a little secret after I show you this, this thing. So if I click and hold on any block, and it need not be out here, I can do it over here. If I click and hold on set color, it brings up a little window. And it shows me what the block is, and then it gives me an example of how it's used. And then it also, in this case, gives me the list of what the colors are. Now, here's a little hint to, to um, keep it straight in your head. This is like the rainbow. And so you've all heard of the, what is it, uh, an acronym, Roy G. Biv. So the colors are in that order, red, orange, yellow, Roy, green, and then um, blues up to indigo and violet. And then not, negative 999 is gray. And that can be really helpful for the background. I could do like fill the background with the color negative 999. And I like the shade of 20. Let's look at that help real quick. Shade, the closer to zero you get, the closer to black it is. The closer to 100 you get, the closer to white. If you choose to set the shade to 100, but you haven't changed the default color of red, you'll notice a red tinge to that white 100. So if you want a real precise white or black, set your color to that gray, negative 9999. 
And then I, I don't set it all the way to zero. I think 20 looks good, which gives me this. It's a kind of a charcoal, dark charcoal. And then I can run my procedure. And it, that color like really pops nicely. But I, as I said, I might get kind of sick of red. So I could set it to a different color. And then it's a little off center, right? Or I should say it's a little off center left. So over here, there's a set X, Y block. And I can do that at the beginning and tinker with this number. So maybe I'll start it at negative 50, zero, because I think it's pretty good top to bottom, but it really could bump left a bit. Now, nope, got to go a little further. Let's try negative 100 and see if that makes me happier. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm in the center now. Okay. Now, all this extra work I've done, it's not saved. So I'm going to do another save here. And again, disk space is cheap, so I'm not going to overwrite Westport 1. I'm just going to make a Westport 2. And then I have a copy of that. So let's make sure we have the rest. We got help. We created a named procedure. And we saved our work. OK, so let's take a quick look at some resources. And then I'm going to quit talking. And I'm going to give you the space and time and support for you to start creating some meaningful art. So the first part is um, Turtle Art Help. It's linked from the bottom here. And this is just a little guide. Um, from Playful Invention that has um, a little explanation of, okay, here's what the blocks are. Here's the colors and the shades. Here's the coordinate system. And then naming the procedure. I'll show you guys and girls in a little bit after you've kind of played, I'll show you what we can do with this store in box. So we have three boxes that we can store in. If some of you told me you've programmed before, this is how we use variables in turtle art, is the store in box. But I'll swing back to that in a little bit, just so I'm not front loading everything on you. Turtle art samples is really nice because Brian and Paula give you specific designs over here and the blocks. And they're just short little snippets that you can use and remix. But these get you going. We didn't play with the arc block yet, but you can make some really cool stuff with the arc. Okay, here's that store in box. And I'll show you that one in a little bit. And then um, we have um, Gary's new turtle art cards. So some additional designs that if you'd like, you can plug these blocks together and play with. And then these are some tutorials that I wrote about using turtle art to program polygons and then rotating the polygon. It's written for the, the desktop version that doesn't run in the web browser, but the blocks are all the same. Um, and then there's also a bit on tiling. You can create some pretty interesting designs by tiling. So there's a, stop, Brian and, and Paula live up in Montreal and I get to go visit them every now and again. Um, but there's a metro stop um, near where Brian lives. And so in homage to that, I programmed this, and this is just a tiling design. So we have a, a procedure called dot, and it just draws different colored dots under the turtle here. And then metro tiles it all to create that. 
And you can also do some interesting um, tiling uh, where you overlap. So these are different arcs that tile. And you get interesting designs like that from uh, the Alhambra in Spain. So, armed with these resources here, what I'd like you to do is work on programming some designs. They might be geometric, as we've kind of explored here with rotating a polygon, or they might be representational, like this cat's ear is a plant up on a Lopez Island off the coast of Washington. Make sure you save and download your, your designs because you'll need them during the next two days of the workshop. I'm gonna work on this design just to kind of plant an idea in your head. Even as you look around in this room, I have more of a vantage point than you, but look at this rug in front of us. Could you program this design maybe starting with solid blocks and then maybe progressing to blocks that are actually made up of many lines that kind of vary. So that's the cool thing about turtle art is it's an interesting way to explore geometry. And geometry happens to be all around us. When I stopped my car at the library to get out, I looked down at the floor mat and there's a design I could spend some time this morning programming, okay? Lots of rectangles at the top with kind of a soft rounded edge. And then this cool design at the bottom there. And, and all of that could easily be translated into, into turtle art to make an interesting design. So once you, um, you know, really get into turtle art and join the cult, um, you begin to see possibilities for turtle art everywhere. So maybe what I'll do um, while you plug away is I'm gonna work on, on that rug myself here. And um, you could follow along, uh, whether you're at home or whether um, you're here along with me. Um, or you can of course work on your own design. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, as I said, with um, Kind of some simple, a simple take on this rug here, uh, which is different color squares. Um, and it seems that sometimes the same colors touch and sometimes they don't. And uh, we'll see what, where we can get. So let's start with making a square here. And I'm going to make that square. Let's see how far 100 is. Yeah, 100 is good. And we already learned from that introduction that repeating four times gives me a square. And we haven't yet used this block, which is the start fill and end fill. And if I plug that at the top of my repeat, and then as I said, when it's done repeating, it goes to what's underneath. So that gives me this, where it'll fill that, okay? And so now I have um, something called fill box, okay? So then what I can do is say, I'd like you to erase my screen. And then over here on the set XY block, if I click on it, it gives me the coordinate system. So if I need to go all the way to the left of my screen, I'm gonna to go to negative 350. And if I wanna go all the way to the top of my screen, that's 280. But I don't need to go all the way to the top because I have that first square, which is 100. So 280 minus 100 is 180. So I'm gonna start my drawing at minus 350x and 180. So if I click that block, that sends my turtle to there, and if I do a fill box, I can see, okay, cool, that turtle's up in that left corner. 
So I got that going. And then what I need the turtle to do is draw me a fill box. And then let's move over a little bit. So let's move over whatever my current X position is. And since I know that a side on that square is 100 long, so whatever my current X position is, plus 100, and then you can just stay on whatever Y position you are on, okay? So then if I run that, I'm there, sweet. So then, again, if I look at this block, I can see the screen goes from negative 350 all the way up to 350. And again, being pretty decent at math, 35 plus 35 is 70, so 700, okay? So I need to get 700, and my box, fill box is 100. So if I repeat this, how many times? I heard it, if I repeat it seven times, that gets me all the way across the screen. Now, the problem is I can't tell that I'm drawing any different boxes along the way because they're all the same, right? So that's where this cool block comes into play, the set shade. So what I'm gonna say is go ahead and draw me a fill box, move over, and then set the shade to a random number. Now, looking at these blocks here, they go anywhere from pretty light, kind of tan overall, to khaki, to this looks bluish to my eye, but there's, there's some brown in there too. So it's kind of light, medium, dark, okay? So anywhere from, let's say, 25 to 75. Okay, so let's try that and see what that gets me. So I attach that repeat seven here to this stack. Cool. Getting a little variation. Kind of see it up there on the screen. Maybe we need to go further and let's try zero to 100 and see if that gets me more variation. Yeah, that's getting me some good variation. But it's getting too close to being super saturated. Let's try 90. Now, this is kind of the beauty of turtle art is I'm just changing like one number in one place and it's changing the design for me. Still a little dark. Let's try 85 and see what that gets me. Okay, cool. Now, the problem is I'm getting more than three colors here. So there's a different block we'll do one of, and we'll say, let's try either 25 or 50 and see what that gets me. Okay, so it's getting me that, but I still need that third color in there. So if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and drag, I get a whole copy of that. So maybe what I want it to do is go ahead and draw, let's move this up to the top here. We'll set the shade, we'll draw a fill box, and we'll move over. And then we're gonna set the shade a specific number. We're gonna set the shade up to seven, up to 85. So one of those blocks will be 85. And then we only need to repeat this. Let's err on the side of getting all the way across. But since we're doing the block box, fill box twice, we're going twice as far. So we're going 200, 400, 600, 800. So we could get away with going four times. Now this is getting a little bulky here, right? So we could name this 
pattern. And suddenly I can tuck this away. So what I'm asking it to do now is clean, go up to the top, and run pattern, which should get me boxes of three different shades marching across the screen. <laughs> One would hope. Where did I go wrong? Set shade. What happened? Oh, it's the order. Okay, remember? This was originally like this. And I changed it here and said, set the shade, then draw the box. But this one I didn't change. So it's going to be either 25 or 50. And it's going to move, and, and, and um, then it'll set the shade. So I need to sh set the shade first, then draw that 85 box and move over. Now let's see if that gets me more of what I need. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So I'm all the way across the screen. Now I need to start moving down the screen. And that's where that's turning this pattern from a big stack into a single block makes kind of keeping, it, it'll keep this easier to read. So when you're done drawing pattern, what we need it to do is go back to negative 350 on the left side of my screen. <laughs> and then um, I need you to go, whatever your Y position is, minus 100, right? Because we're going down the length of one side of that. So that ought to get my turtle over to there. Yes? Uh, for some reason, we're not finding the fill box or the pattern block in our, um, on our screen. Have you looked here under the, we're looking for the start fill and end fill blocks. And they should be here under the blue tab. Do you, do you see the blue tab there? Oh, yeah. Um, it's because I made these blocks. Yeah, so what I did is like um, the fill box one, I made that block by putting these blocks together. Then I put the hat on top of it and named it fill box. And then that creates this fill box. I got to keep this stack around. If I delete it, fill box goes away. Okay, but yeah, that's why you don't see them because you have to you have to name them. Okay, so I've I've created a pattern that moves across the screen, and then I've gotten the turtle back over to the left side of the screen and down 100 from where it was. Let's take a peek again at that set X Y block. Starts at 280 ends at negative 280. This one's a little tougher. That's 560. So I know I need to go six times. So we'll tuck this pattern and then move down. And it gets me that. And I need to change that to six. And it ought to move all the way through. Now. It's always drawing that 85 block in the same place. So see if you can change the code a bit. And it's going to be this pattern. Whoops. This is where the code needs to be goofed with. So maybe what we do, well, see what you can figure out. I have a solution. But essentially what we need to do is we want to get 85 in there somehow, but we need it randomized a bit. Any ideas? Because right now we're saying this first block up in the top left corner, it's going to either be 25 or 50. And it looks like it was 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 50, 50. The second block is always going to be 85.
but we're creating this pattern that isn't in the real rug that we see in the library. So we, we want to somehow randomize that. And then the next one, again, will be either 25 or 50. So maybe what we do, any ideas? The answer is right in front of us, because we've done, we've done it on part of this um, pattern procedure. But what we'll do is, instead of setting the shade 85 here, again, we'll use the one of block. And we'll say set it to um, 50 or 85. And let's see what that does to our overall pattern. Yeah, that's looking more like what I'm seeing from up on the stage, the, the pattern of the rug here. And it changes every time I run it because we've built in this randomness to it. I'm going to save that one for sure, uh, Westport 3. Now. You all digging this? Should I continue playing with this in front of you? Because another thing we could do with this is, as I noted, the um, weave of the rug isn't solid. Okay, They aren't solid blocks like we have up here. So what we could do is create a new fill box procedure. But instead of drawing a square, we're going to use lines that are 100 long. I'm going to reload this whole page so I just have a nice clean palette here. But you can build on what you have. But instead of drawing a square this time, I think what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, set the shade to either 25 or 50 and go forward 100. And then I'm going to pick up my pen right here, the pen up, and I'm going to go back 100. And that'll get me, whoops start with clean, that'll get me that. And then I need to immediately remember to put the pen down or I'll go crazy not figuring out why <laughs> it's not working right. Okay, then I'm gonna ask the turtle to set the x, y to x. And in this case, I happen to know from nine years of doing this that the default pen size is four. So x plus 4 and then whatever your y is. OK, and that's going to get me this. So if I repeat that 100 times, actually, one more thing. We need to build in that 85, right? So we're going to duplicate this, hold down Shift, and drag away, and I get a whole new stack. So either 85 or 50. Stack that there. And then we'll repeat this 50 times, because we're doing two lines. So 2 times 50 gives me 100. One, two, why does that go so many times? We're going forward and back. Forward and back. How far are we going here? So I don't understand, sitting up here, why, oh, because I'm adding 4. So 100 divided by 4 is how many times I actually need to repeat it. I was going to try one other trick, but this, this gets it for me. Nope. 
wrong. So we're on four, eight, 100 divided by eight, sorry. You see why that happened, the way it happened? We're asking the turtle to move four over instead of just one. If we're asking the turtle to move one, x plus one here, we could repeat 100 times and get the square that I'm after. Whoops, no, I'm still rectangle. But that weave is too tight compared to our rug. So we want to do plus four and plus four because we're using a size four pen. And that 100 divided by eight should give me a 100 square. Good. Okay, so this I'm going to call rug pat for rug pattern. And then we've built this, so we can do clean, set x, y to negative 350, 180. And then we know we're going to repeat six times, rug pat, set the x, y back to negative 350. And whatever y is, minus 100. And if we do that enough times, whoops, we need to do rug pat, and then we need to move, sorry, x plus 100. I did the code to move us down, but I didn't move, do the code to move us over. So x plus 100. and whatever your y is. Just keep the same y position. Okay, repeat that seven times. And then repeat. That, this is good because then we get to use this block. This is just a spacer block. So my blocks don't overlap and you all can read them. And I'll do that. This is our move down code. And we're gonna repeat this whole block six times. I'm moving too far, X. Yeah, you don't need to move the X on that one because it's already at the end. Unlike before where we drew a box, we end up where we start. When we're doing the lines, we end up right at the end. So we don't have to do the, the set X, Y, X plus 100. We just do rug pat seven times. Rug pat. Now, this one doesn't look enough like the one before. Four, Westport three that I saved out. This looks a lot closer to the pattern here in the library. Do you have a question? Josh, we did. Um, just if you go back to your pattern with the skinny lines where you did the 100 divided by eight, yeah. the rug pat. Yeah. Just a little reminder to people, the reason we got to eight is because I believe there's a grouping of the turtle going up which is four wide and down, which is four wide. So four plus four is eight. So you had to divide the hundred by eight. Well, it, it, the up and down are on the same X coordinate mm -hmm. and then it steps over one. But then I, I wanted to get that 85 shade in as well. So it's doing one that's a shade that might be 85. So we've moved eight by okay. the time that's done. And then I'm too lazy to do the math. So 100 divided by eight would then get us, so it's moved the distance of 100. Great, we just had a question about that. Yeah, that, now that, 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 eight uh, that was kind of an obtuse way for me to do it, but, but we got it in the end. And then um, again, you might get sick of 
the color red. And so we could change this whole pattern here, maybe shift it a little towards the, the orange. Um, so if we remember Roy G. Biv, 10 is orange, so I'm gonna do 12. And that gets me that. And then um, I could even play with um, changing the pen size. Now, if I change the pen size, that's going to break some of the math that's happening in the background. But if I keep the pen size bigger, now, because it's moving eight, but look what happened. Like, we get these nice blocks where it's actually the same color. So we're actually getting a little closer in the end. Like, if I set the pen size to something ridiculous like 20, I could get, it gets, it, it starts to work its way towards a completely different design. You know, and again, that's kind of the interesting thing about turtle art is it's really easy to tinker and change things. So let's set it back here to four. And this is, this is, we've somehow managed to, to work our way to tiling, you know, the, this, this uh, Westport three that we did. I'm gonna save this one again, because I made some changes. We'll say this is Westport four B here. But looking back at, at, at Westport three, maybe play with the colors here. Oops. That's getting close to the color scheme. We have a question from remote. Please. Someone is just wondering if you can go over how they save their project again. Yeah, for sure. So I just did it here, but watch my screen real quick. Um, I'm gonna change the color here. Let's change it to 18 and run it again. Okay, cool. And then down here in the bottom left corner is this little document with an arrow pointing down. If I click that, it'll ask me, what do I want to name it? And so I'm going to just incrementally change this one to 3C. And then I'll click OK. And then it saves to wherever, wherever your web browser is set to, to save. So on my Mac, that's the downloads folder and it might be similar on your PC. Um, but then I'm getting, you'll see, I'm getting a pretty good stack here of different um, designs and iterations. And as I said, like, I like, like as I'm playing in turtle art, I'll show you an example of, of some recent work here. Um, square, did I do any here in turtle art? This may have been, a, whoops. Variations. So I like to, one thing that I like to do is come up with the design that then I, I end up kind of stepping through it in different ways. So here's a design that does that design one time. Okay, so. And this is kind of getting ahead of ourselves here because we're playing with variables. Let me actually, I'll come back to this. Let's do this real quick. So I mentioned at the beginning, towards the beginning, under the yellow tab here, we have this store in box one. And a few, few of your eyes lit up when I said, this is how you do variables in turtle art. So, um, if I drag out this store in box one, I can store a number in that box. It's a bucket, as it were. So I might, I might do 10 as my example number. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just, you know, that square is awfully nice. Let's actually do, let's do a, um, yeah, square will be good for, for what I'm trying to do. Nah, let's do something more exotic, right? Okay, let's live a little. Let's do an eight-sided, actually a seven-sided. That's even more exotic. A seven-sided figure. So we'll say, go 
forward, whatever the number is in box one at that moment. And then turn right. Again, I'm going to be lazy. 360 divided by the number of sides of my polygon. Okay. And it's going to draw me a tiny little heptagon, I think is the name of the seven sided figure. Okay. Cool. I got that. I'm going to name it Hepta. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to just really bank on it really being a heptagon. Let's uh heptagon. Let's see if I'm right. Yes. Okay. So I've drawn this heptagon, right? Now what I'm going to do and I've created a hepta block. I named it with that hap block. And that's how why I, I have the hepta block and you might not. When you're done drawing the hepta block, I want you to move over a little bit here. So X minus 10, go left. And let's also go down a little bit. Y minus 10. But also, while we're at it, let's refill that bucket. So let's take whatever is in box one. So we're going to store in box one whatever is currently in box one, plus 10. So that's why I'm moving left and down 10 as well, because I'm making that side longer by 10. So now if I repeat this a bunch of times, Let's start with 50 and see where we get. Now I'm going to add a clean at the top here. Whoops, that didn't do what I needed to, to do at all. Store in box one, box, oh, here. The problem is by building that store in box one into hepta, it's always going to be 10. It's always resetting to 10. That, this actually needs to go on my master procedure here. So hepta just has go forward box one. We'll deal with what, what gets stored in box one later. And then here in my master procedure, clean, fill that box, starting with 10, draw hepta, move over and down a little bit, put 10 more in your box, and then draw another hepta and repeat that 50 times. And I get that. So it looks like I'm moving down more than I need to. So again, highly tinkerable. I'm going to change y to y minus 5 and get that. And now I'm filling the screen nicely. Okay. And then maybe I goof with it a little further and I say, hey, why don't you go left just a little bit, like 5 degrees on every turn? Whoa, that wasn't what I hoped would happen. But that's very interesting. Maybe we just go left one and see if it does, breaks it. Another interesting one, okay? But that's pretty cool, like that. Now, everything we've drawn so far is kind of flat, right? We're using like a single color. Maybe we're filling the background. I like that negative 99920. You know, that dark background there because it really makes the colors pop out. But it's flat still. Okay, single color. So maybe what we can do is turn this whole procedure into a block. Okay. And we're going to name that. I'm going to name it web because to my mind it kind of looks like a spider's web. And... Um, Maybe what we'll do is we'll start by erasing and filling the screen. And then maybe what we'll do is let's start by setting the pen a little bigger. Like let's set the pen to like six and draw a web and see what lo that looks like. Okay, cool. We still have some space between. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 
We'll start with um, filling the screen and setting the pen size big. And then we're gonna do this a few times. We're gonna repeat four times. Um, let's repeat uh, three times. We'll draw a web and then we're gonna make our pen size a little smaller. So set the pen size to whatever your pen size currently is, minus one and a half. And then let's set the shade. Let's bump the shade. The default shade's 50. So let's just bump the shade. We're gonna bump it up towards, heading towards white, towards unsaturated. So set the shade to whatever the shade is, plus 10. And let's see what that looks like. Whoops. So it looks like when I'm done here, I need to go back to the very center of the screen. Okay, cool. That gets me a little more depth, but it's probably hard to see on, yeah. So here, let's do this. Let's only add, let's add 20 to the box here and see how that breaks things, cool. And then we need to minus 10 here. So I'm just trying to get a little more space here and we need to, looks like maybe minus 15 here. There, okay, so maybe minus 20. So I, I spread out my web a bit and that what that's gonna allow me to do is maybe set a bigger pen to begin with, maybe all the way up to 12 and get away with more repeats here. Um, I'm gonna need to set the shade less a little in each increment or I'm gonna bump back into zero and I'll be back at, at black and the design won't look, um, I'm kind of trying to get like a kind of a chrome look to this. Uh, so that gets me that, okay. Or kind of a neon look, I guess. If I changed my color to, to gray, I could um, possibly get kind of a chrome. Um, that. But that's getting a little more interesting of a line than just that original design where we didn't goof, where we just did draw me a web and move a little bit here. That's cool. This is cooler though. And again, like I just need to change one number here and I can step through my favorite colors, you know, and see how they react. Yeah, maybe I play with the shade. You know, maybe I am, maybe I do let it bump back towards the dark and see what it looks like. Wow, cool, okay. So that's getting almost too saturated and I'm losing that gradient. Maybe we go three and see what it looks like. Okay, not enough. So there we go. So five is kind of the, the sweet spot there, four looks pretty nice. Okay. So I went from this really simple procedure that uses the same procedure web as a more complex procedure where I'm you know, setting the pen size, changing my color, and then repeating it while changing the, making the pen size smaller and changing the shade to get that. What number am I up to now? Four, five. All right, good. I've already come up with five new designs today. That's awesome. Um, here's something I was kind of thinking of in my head. Um, 
is what if we taught the turtle how to do a square? And we'll just do, you know, the default 100 and 90. And that draws me a square. And I'm going to name it box. And then one block we haven't messed with yet is this arc block. And so there has two numbers to it, the angle and then the, the radius. So if I wanted my... If I wanted to get a circle that's the same diameter as this square here, my radius would need to be 50, and I'd want to go all the way around, and we learned already 360 is that magic number. That gets me that. Okay, so now I'm going to just name this guy circle. But then what if I tell it and this is going to take a little tinkering to do. What if I tell it to, we're going to move on, a, on an arc. So we're going to move on a big arc here. Uh, bigger than that. Let's see, if the whole screen is 700 wide and 560 tall, our limiting number is 560. So um, maybe we want our radius to be, let's try 200 and see where we get here on the grand scheme of things. That's pretty nice. Back around like that, sweet. We'll change this number to 360, okay? So, and then I'm heading off the screen. So maybe the next thing we need to do is we're gonna go over like, over negative 200 and draw that. Yeah, good. Okay. So we got that set up here. But then I think what I want it to do is we're going to kind of break this down here. So get over here and then let's turn left 90 degrees. And which one am I pointed there? Good. And then let's draw a box. Okay, good. And then we're going to go right 90 degrees. And that gets me back there. Sweet. Now, I'm going to pick up my pen now. And can somebody tell me what 360 divided by 20 is? I know we're rusty. 18. Thank you. So 360 divided by 20 is 18. So we're going to go 20 degrees here. And I didn't click this stack here, so my pen is up, which is fine, because it'll kind of better illustrate. And then I'm going to put the pen back down here. And then I'm going to go left 90 again and then I'm going to draw a circle and then I'm going to go right 90 okay and if I do this 18 times I'm going to get an interesting pattern Now, I'm going off the screen, which bothers my artistic sensibilities. So in order to fix that, any idea what, there's one number I can kind of start with changing on this big stack that I could tighten that circle that it's traveling in. Any idea what that number might be? If it's starting out here, I want to tighten that circle, that arc, series of arcs it's traveling in. If it's this big, I want to make it this big. It's this arc block. Okay, we want to keep going 20, but 
Maybe we change the radius to 150 and see what that gets us. All right, I'm totally on the screen. I'm a little far to my left, so let's maybe change that number to negative 150. That's looking good. That's looking good. And then what if we uh, did something interesting like filled that circle? So I'm going to put a start fill, circle, end fill. And that gets me that. And this is kind of looking weird. Um, but maybe if we change the color to a different color, and then remember to set it back to that red afterwards, we get that. Ooh, that's kind of interesting with the part of the line emerging from the square over the circle there. Looks like we need to go at the end here. Again, my artistic sensibilities being offended because here it does a square, then a circle. That's the first circle, second circle, and then it finally starts overlapping, right? So maybe here at the end, we need to tell it, go left 90, draw another square, or box as we named it in this procedure. That gets me that overlap and then go right 90, pick up the pen, take that arc of 20, 150, remember to put the pen down so you don't go crazy trying to figure out why the turtle's not drawing anymore. Go left 90 again, and draw one last square. Whoops, box, draw one last box. And that gets it overlapped like it is in the rest of the design. I'm gonna name this guy because it's kind of big. I'm gonna name this guy Finish, and I'll tuck Finish here at the end of Repeat. So. Repeat all this stuff, and when you're done, drop out here and do finish. Like that, beautiful. And then the last thing I, I think I'd like to do is I'd like to add that background color that I like up here. Snap those back together, and I get that. Wonderful. Okay. And then I could even go farther and duplicate all of this and say when you're done, go back to zero, zero. This again is going to take a little tinkering. So go back here. Whoops. Do this. And then we're going to go back to zero, zero. And then oh, we built it differently. So right now, <clears throat> box is stuck at 100. We could make box draw at 100, uh, box one rather, just as we could make circle draw at box one divided by two. Okay, and now everything is keyed into box one. So we started with box one at 100, right? That gives me the same design. But now I can change one number, and suddenly my design's bigger or smaller. And then what that would allow me to do is, okay, we started at 100, like that. But then I could do, and this almost like warrants just because it's getting unwieldy, naming this something like wreath. Okay, up 
scoot that around. But now I can do, draw me a big wreath at 100. And then when you're done, go back to 0, 0. There's a nice block here called set heading. And that will get me back up to 0. So I'm going to say set the heading up to 0 so I'm pointing directly over. And then store in box 1, 25, and draw a wreath. Okay, and that's cool and all, but not what I was hoping for. Um, so something in wreath itself, yes. It's the radius here. We need to change the radius from being hard-coded at 150 to being box one plus 50. Maybe, we'll see what happens. Okay, that gives me that. And then, let's make sure I really click that. And then when I make it smaller, yeah. Okay, that changed that. So now we just need to play with, well, you aren't really starting at zero, zero. You need to be starting like maybe minus 100. Let's see what that gets me. Nope, minus 75. Closer. One of those like N parts is not right. And I think that might be in the finish. Yep, we need to change this to box one plus 50. There we are. And if that looks too unnatural, then we just change like the, uh, the set color here. Maybe go more towards orange there. Nice. And then that middle part still looks kind of empty to me. So maybe at the very end, what I do is I go back to zero, zero which puts me right in the middle. And then I crank my pen size up to something ridiculous, like 100. And I set my shade a little higher. And I go forward zero. And that's gonna just make a big dot. That. Now, one thing I haven't shown you is what this button does over here. The button with the turtle art on the side, if you click that, it just hides everything, hides all your blocks, so you can bask in the glory of your art. The play button up at the top right, it will run any procedure that starts with clean. So my master procedure here, it starts with clean, it'll run that. If I unclick this, <laughs> you get something weird, which is, I mean, that's kind of interesting unto itself. That looks like kind of like a poppy um, flower hiding behind the one that hasn't quite bloomed yet, but I meant for it to be like that. So we'll go to there. And then again, to save the work, down here in the bottom left. Give it a name that's meaningful and say OK. And it'll download it there. Can I show you some work, a, a piece of turtle art that one of my students programmed a couple years ago that um, I did a project with eighth grade students programming and turtle art. And when I showed 
her design to Brian Silverman, um, he asked if he could hire her, and I explained that he had she had to finish eighth, she had to finish high school first. Yeah. Let me um, just show you Sydney's work really quickly, and then I'll drop this one back in. So. Um, So she did two different pieces. And as I said, Brian offered to hire her after this. So this is the first one she did. You can see it's our code, it gets a little complex, but she's simplified it all to this little stack here. Um, I'm gonna get these guys down here. So as I said, this was programmed by an eighth grader and it's beyond what I personally do on my turtle art, but it's some beautiful work. And then the other one that she programmed is this, and this doesn't always show up great on the screen, but it's worth running. So she has a fire and then the smoke coming from it, so very representational and beautiful. Um, mine again. So are you all coming up with some good stuff? What we're going to do tomorrow, just to pause for a moment and look ahead, is we're going to take these designs that we've created and, and you're going to choose one of them. Like if we went back here to the beginning of today. So this one with right and forward, I, I, I like the complexity of that and the, the secondary lines. It, again, it would be, whoops, nice to maybe center it a little more on the screen. So I'm gonna maybe go over negative 50 and, and see where that gets me. Nope, need to go further over there. That's pretty nice. Cool, so then what I'm gonna end up doing tomorrow is taking this design, resave it here, 1B, and um, using this as the basis for starting um, with something in Art Logo, which isn't block based, it's uh, typing text. So you need to be a little more careful about making sure everything's spelled correctly. But I thought if you had a collection of designs that you'd come up with in the kind of simplicity of the block setting and then work to translate them tomorrow into, into text, there's a few cool tools in, um, in uh, Art Logo that aren't in um, Turtle Art that we can do uh, some, some additional complexity in your art. But it, it would be good for you to have a, a collection of art um, that you can, you can share. And then on Wednesday, we'll actually be uploading the art that you've programmed in both Turtle Art and in Art Logo to a Google Drive space that you'll have access to um, that you can say, oh, I, I really like what Olivia down, uh, programmed. I'm gonna download that. Olivia really likes the color red, but I'm, I found myself more into the color blue, so I'm gonna change this number in Olivia's code and, and make, um, make the design mine. And maybe I change the pen size or the, the background fill, maybe, um, you know, I've, I've kind of shown you guys and girls, I like that negative 99920, but maybe um, when Olivia gets to the design and wants to remix it, maybe the first thing Olivia says is let's make that a bigger square, and then um, let's also Go forward a little more to open up the middle. And I'm running off the screen a bit, so I need to go up a little bit, maybe 25, and it looks like I need to go left a little bit. Something like that. And then maybe Olivia says, let's run this 
twice. But on that second pass, now let's start with a bigger pen. And on that second pass, whoops. Here's another bracket so your blocks don't overlap. So this bracket here I can snap in. So after I'm done, actually I'm gonna snap it in here. So after I'm done with the first go through, what I want to have happen is I want to change the color. Actually, I set the shade up to 95 and set my pen size to four and then run it again. I get that. And it looks like I could be even more generous on the first pass, the 12, there we go, that looks cool. Still looks like I need to move over left a little bit. Like that. that looks pretty good, like that. Cool, so now I have a procedure that I can work with tomorrow um, to move this into art logo, but I could also um, upload this on Wednesday and let somebody else play with it. Maybe they say that you are um, turning right 10 times, in which case we probably need to repeat this 360 divided by 10, and it's gonna get much more complex, but bigger as well. Uh, so it looks like we need to make our square smaller. Like let's set the square back to 100 and see where we get. But then the forward, we probably need to change that forward a little bit. Ooh, that got interesting quickly. Let's change that to 40. That opens it back up, but maybe more than we need it open. So I'll do 30 like that. This is kind of dating me, but it looks like Eddie Van Halen's guitar. <laughs> Thank you.